Hello guys, today we are going to discuss about a very important topic called as a dissection of back. We have discussed so many topics in the upper limb and now we have come to the dissection of the back. So coming to the dissection of the back, why we need to discuss the dissection of the back? In a few minutes we will understand it. Before going to explore this, please like, comment, subscribe and share. Now coming to the back, muscles of the back. Why we need to discuss the back muscles in the upper limb? Because the muscles which are present in our upper limb and the scapula which is present in the upper limb, that scapula, the muscles which are present over there, the muscles which are connecting the upper limb to the vertebral column. So we can also call it as the axial muscles are connecting the appendicular skeleton to the axial skeleton. So that's why the muscles which are connecting appendicular skeleton that is upper limb bones to the axial skeleton that is vertebral column, the muscles are called as axio-appendicular muscles. Now the superficial muscle structures which are on the back of the body are studied with the upper limb. So this is the reason why we are discussing the uh, muscles of upper limb, muscles of the back in the upper limb. Now let us discuss about here. In this picture, you can identify this is the trapezius muscle which is connecting in the superficial strata, the appendicular skeleton that is upper limb, the bone of upper limb that is scapula to this vertebral column. Here you can see the origin of the trapezius. So this is one axio-appendicular muscle. Underneath it you can identify this big muscle called as latissimus dorsi. We usually call them as lats. So this latissimus dorsi is also connecting the appendicular skeleton that is humerus to the axial skeleton that is the vertebral column. Now underneath these two trapezius and the latissimus dorsi we are going to see Levator scapulae. This is a levator scapulae which is connecting the scapula to the vertebral column. And below that, we can identify rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major muscles. So, these are also connecting the scapula with the vertebral column. So, that's why these are the muscles are called as axio appendicular muscles. Now, moving to this. Humerus, I try to observe here. So, here we can identify this is the anterior aspect of the humerus where we can identify the two lips of uh, uh, intertubercular sulcus. And here you can see the greater tubercle, lesser tubercle. And here you can identify the floor where the latissimus dorsi is getting inserted. And the trapezius, which I had told you that it is getting inserted to the scapula, it is not only getting inserted to the scapula, but also it is getting inserted to the posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle. In such a way, the appendicular skeleton is connected to the axial skeleton. Now, coming to this scapula, we can find uh, the process, acromion process, then the crest of the spine of the scapula. And you need to uh, find out these three angles and three, the vertebral level is very important. So the medial border is also called as vertebral border, where we can identify the scapula three borders. So for the osteology of the scapula, you can find the video in my channel. You can see the in the content, you can identify the osteology of the scapula, where we can identify all the angles, borders and surfaces. So, coming to the superior angle of the scapula, it is where it is present between superior border and the medial border, it is present at the level of T2. Then the root of the spine of the scapula, that is present at the level of T3. And the inferior angle of the scapula, which is present at the level of T7. Let us see that. So, here we are seeing the thoracic cage from the posterior aspect and here you can identify the scapula. And let us see these three angles now three vertebral levels so this is the superior angle of the scapula it is present at the level of t2 t1 here and t2 so this is present at the level of t2 then here you can identify the root of the spine of the scapula so this is present at the level of t3 and then you can identify the 
inferior angle of the scapula which is present at the level of T7 spine that is thoracic 7th cervical 7th thoracic spine now moving to the we have removed the skin at the back soon after that we can identify the cutaneous nerves so the cutaneous nerves which are supplying to the skin so the cutaneous nerves on the back are derived from the posterior ramus of the spinal nerves each primary ramus divides into medial and lateral branches up to the sixth thoracic spine the cutaneous innervation is provided by the medial branches which emerges close to the median plane below the t6 the cutaneous innervation is provided by the lateral branches which emerge in line with the lateral edge of the spinal muscles now let us see the higher yeah here you can identify upper th six thoracic spines lower th six thoracic spines so upper six thoracic spine thoracic uh, segments that are giving medial branches those medial branches are supplying to the skin skin of the back in the upper half lower half which are emerges out from the lateral branches which are supplying to the skin over the back so the cutaneous branches of upper three lumbar nerves upper three lumbar nerves emerge a short distance above the iliac crest here you can identify so these turn downwards over it to supply the skin of the gluteal region as well so the lumbar three nerves they're also supplying to the skin of the back and also the lower three lumbar nerves l1 l2 l3 nerves they're running over the iliac crest and gets into the gluteal region and supplies to the skin over the gluteal region here you can identify them Now coming to the cutaneous vessels, cutaneous arteries which accompany the cutaneous nerves on the back of the body, in the thoracic and in the lumbar regions are the dorsal branches of posterior intercostal arteries in the upper part, then they are coming from the lumbar arteries at the lower lumbar region. Now moving to the posterior axial appendicular muscles, so as I told you that which are connecting the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton so you guys knows very well about the axial skeleton so which are consisting of the skull vertebral column ribs and the sternum and the appendicular skeleton you can see the upper limb bones and the lower limb bones so now let us see the muscles that attaches the scapula to the back of the trunk are arranged in the two layers one is superficial layer and one is a deep layer now coming to the superficial layer we can identify the trapezius and the lattice must also say in the deep layer you can identify elevator scapulae rhomboidus major rhomboidus minor now let us discuss about one by one so the first muscle is trapezius muscle so the trapezius is a flat let us see that so trapezius muscle is a flat triangular muscle on the back on the back and the neck back of the neck and you can identify in the upper part of the thorax so the posterior part of the neck is occupied by the trapezius posterior part of the thorax is occupied by this trapezius so it is a triangular shaped muscle now what is the origin of it so it arises from different regions so first part is coming from medial one third of the superior nuchal line which is present on the occipital bone along the midline along the middle line from the ligamentum nuchae then the spine of a seventh cervical vertebrae and the spines of all thoracic vertebrae so from all these three or uh, four different parts the trapezius is arising let us see here so the superior nuchal line here you can see the ligamentum nuchae okay and here you can identify from all the thoracic spines it is arising now this is the dissected image so that you can see and remember carefully how the trapezius is arising from all the thoracic spines here we have removed the head and neck now what about the insertion of it so the insertion is it occurs as follows so first one is the superior fibers let us see these are the superior fibers and these are the middle fibers and these are the lower fibers you can see the superior over here middle and inferior fibers so coming to the superior fibers superior fibers are running downwards downwards and laterally they are extending downwards and laterally 
and they are getting inserted to the posterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle. Let us see that. These are the upper fibers and they are getting inserted to the posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle. Now, this is the upper fibers, how they are extending down and getting inserted to the uh, posterior border of lateral one third of clavicle. Can you find here? So these are nothing but your upper fibers or superior fibers of trapezius. Now moving to the middle and the lower fibers. So the middle fibers which are running horizontally, horizontally to be inserted to the medial margin of acromion process of scapula. As you all know that the spine of the scapula which is extending laterally. So the upper lip of the spine of the scapula is extending as the medial border of acromion process of scapula. Lower lip of spine of the scapula is extending as the lateral border of acromion process of the scapula. So this medial border of acromion process of scapula which is giving insertion to the middle fibers of trapezius middle fibers of trapezius and also and also these middle fibers they are also getting inserted to the upper lip upper lip of the uh, spinal crest okay spine of the scapula and uh, coming to the lower fibers so try to observe this lower fibers so the lower fibers are passing upwards and laterally to be inserted to the deltoid tubercle at the junction of middle third of the spine of the scapula middle third of the spine of the scapula and the medial 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 part of the scapula okay so between these two can identify a tubercle called as deltoid tubercle deltoid tubercle remember carefully there is a deltoid tubercle in this upper limb deltoid tuberosity on the humerus and then deltoid ligament which we can identify in the lower limb okay so you have to be careful when you mention the word deltoid now that is about the upper or superior, middle and the lower fibers of trapezius. Now try to see here how the middle fibers are running and how the upper fibers are running and how the lower fibers are running and where it exactly attaches. So upper fibers are going to the clavicle, middle fibers are going to the spine of the scapula and the medial margin of acromion process and the lower fibers are extending up and reaching to this deltoid tubercle of the scapula now let us see the let us see here here you can identify the middle fibers the, the, this is this is the dissected image where we can identify how the trapezius fibers are running and getting inserted in detail yeah here you can see the lower fibers upper middle and the lower fibers Now coming to the nerve supply, what about the nerve supply of it? So nerve supply it is by spinal part of accessory nerve, that is 11th cranial nerve, and the ventral rami of a C3 and C4, they carry proprioceptive sensations. You may get a doubt that when it is present at the back, why not it is supplied by the dorsal rami of dorsal rami of the spinal nerves? So it is very simple that this lattice plus dorsi and the trapezius these muscles are present these muscles are present ventrally actually but they migrate to the back they migrate to the back in the intrauterine life so that's why these are supplied by the ventral rami of c3 c4 ventral rami of the spinal nerves even the lattice muscle dorsi is also supplied by the ventral rami that is the thoracodarsal okay now moving to this this is how the spinal accessory which is supplying to the anterior aspect of the trapezius muscle here you can identify that now moving to the actions let us see the actions of it upper fibers yeah observe this upper fibers upper fibers of trapezius along with the levator scapulae elevate the scapula as in shrugging moment as in shrugging moment can you find this shrugging moment so when the scapula is moved up the upper fibers are acting upper fibers of the trapezius along with the levator scapulae is they are acting then the middle fibers are of the trapezius along with the rhomboidus they retract the scapula as in bracing back the shoulder so here we are seeing the shrugging moment shrugging moment so the shrugging moment is caused by upper fibers of the trapezius and the levator scapulae now let us see that this is the middle fibers 
so retraction of the scapula is carried out by the trapezius retraction now coming to this the other muscle the lower fibers lower fibers the acting with the serratus anterior the trapezius rotates the scapula forward so that the arm can be abducted beyond 90 degrees beyond 90 degrees so that is helped by this trapezius as well lower fibers of the trapezius as well now moving forwards and try to see the another muscle present below the trapezius below means uh, in the upper part of the back is occupied by the trapezius lower part is occupied by the latissimus dorsi this latissimus dorsi is a wide flat triangular muscle on the back and possess extensive origin as the trapezius and it is having a narrow insertion narrow insertion whereas the trapezius having an extensive origin and as well as extensive insertion so these two part two bones are giving insertion to the trapezius whereas this latissimus dorsi has extensive origin but only narrow incision narrow incision so it is a muscle of upper limb supplied by the branch of brachial plexus and migrated to the trunk of trunk for the functional reasons so this is what i have told you earlier now let us see the origin of this latissimus dorsi so first point it is arising from the spines of lower sixth thoracic vertebrae lower sixth thoracic vertebrae anterior to the trapezius so these muscles are present anterior to the trapezius in the anatomical position uh, when you dissect from back first in the superficial strata we can identify the trapezius underneath it you can identify the latissimus dorsi the next one is posterior lamina of thoracolumbar fascia posterior lamina of thoracolumbar fascia I, the, for thoracolumbar fascia we are having a video in my channel you can just uh, search for it you can find the thoracolumbar fascia then you can understand easily how it is giving origin to this latissimus dorsi as well so uh, this is the one uh, two different origins of the latissimus dorsi is a low six thoracic spines and then we can identify here you can identify the thoracolumbar fascia how it is giving origin to this latissimus dorsi now next thing is outer lip of outer lip of uh, the posterior part of the iliac crest outer lip of posterior part of iliac crest by muscular slips you can identify the muscular slips over here okay so this is how so here all it is arise giving origin to this outer lip of iliac crest is giving origin to the latissimus dorsi then the lower three ribs now you can identify here lower three ribs also giving origin to this latissimus dorsi next one is inferior angle here you can identify inferior angle of the scapula so this is present at the level of t7 these are the lower three ribs which are giving origin to the latissimus dorsi and here you can identify the inferior angle of the scapula which is also giving origin to the latissimus dorsi now coming to the insertion where it is getting inserted so uh, from its extensive origin the fibers are passes laterally with a different degrees of obliquity the upper fibers let us see that upper fibers are present almost horizontally upper fibers are nearly horizontally the middle fibers are oblique middle fibers are oblique and the lower fibers almost they are vertical these are called as lower fibers they are almost vertical to form a sheet that overlaps the inferior angle of the scapula inferior angle of the scapula then after that where they are getting inserted let us see that so this sheet uh, curves around the inferior lateral border of inferior lateral border of the teres major to gain its anterior surface here it ends as a flattened tendon which is inserted to the floor of intertubercular sulcus floor of intertubercular sulcus then this latissimus dorsi and the teres major together forms posterior axillary fold posterior axillary fold so insertion of the latissimus dorsi is to the floor of intertubercular sulcus here you can identify this is the lateral lip and this is the medial lip and this is the latissimus dorsi which is getting inserted to the floor of intertubercular sulcus the nerve supply of the latissimus dorsi is by 
Thorakot Arsenal now. From the post record of break help access, let us see that. So here you can identify this is supplied by the Thorakot Arsenal now, which is a branch of the post record of break help access. Now actions, let us see the action. So it is a powerful adductor, powerful adductor. Latissimus dorsi is active in adduction, extension and rotation. Adduction, extension, rotation, especially medial rotation of the scap, medial rotation of the humerus. So here in this picture, in this GIF image, you can identify. So if this woman is pulling something from above, so during that, movement so this latissimus dorsi is helping the pectoralis major in pulling something or in another movement it, it it just pushes the body up it pushes the body up when the body is climbing when a person is climb, climbing upwards or a tree or something else then this latissimus dorsi is assisting the pectoralis major in pushing the body up pushing the body up it pulls up the trunk upwards and forwards during climbing so this is a movement which i have explained then it assists the backward swinging of the arm during walking so when when the when walking when you're walking how the limbs upper limbs are moving so the backward swinging is happened by this latissimus dorsi it takes part in all violent expiratory functions okay so here try to observe this picture this latissimus dorsi is assisting the pectoralis major in pushing the body up pushing the body up yeah coming to this lumbar triangle what is this lumbar triangle now let us see that the lower fibers of latissimus dorsi which are coming from the iliac crest so it is the anterior to this the lower fibers of latissimus dorsi and posterior to the external oblique abdominis muscle between these two you can identify the small triangle called as lumbar triangle lumbar triangle so apex is uh, found by the junction of latissimus dorsi fibers posteriorly anteriorly external oblique abdominis upon your uh, external oblique abdominis muscle and the base is formed by the iliac crest so this is called as lumbar triangle it doesn't have any importance uh, of this lumbar triangle but another important triangle is there and here you can see the lumbar triangle and now here you can identify the triangle of auscultation let us see that this is the color triangle of auscultation where it is present exactly it is present lateral to the lateral to the trapezius muscle and medial to this medial border of the scapula and the apex is formed by the junction of scapula and the lower fibers of trapezius and the base is formed by the upper margin or superior border of latissimus dorsi here you can identify the upper fibers of latissimus dorsi so this particular triangle is called as triangle of auscultation so what is this triangle of auscultation what is the importance of this triangle of auscultation is so at the at the left side at the left side we can identify the splashing of the liquids when you just keep the step over it at the left side back we can hear the splashing of the liquids during the obstruction of esophagus during the obstruction of esophagus and at the right side you may hear the lung sounds lower lobe lung sounds you may hear when you keep the step at the triangle of auscultation at the right side so on the left side you can identify the splashing of the liquids in the use of azial obstruction now here you can identify the triangle of auscultation now coming to the deep posterior axial appendicular muscle so we have discussed two superficial muscles trapezius and latissimus dorsi underneath these two muscles you can identify three more muscles called as levator scapulae rhomboidus minor and rhomboidus major so coming to this levator scapulae levator scapulae is a slender muscle here you can see this is the slender muscle it arises by the tendinous slips from transverse process of atlas transverse plus process of axis and also posterior tubercles of posterior tubercles of transverse process of c3 and c4 so from four different regions this levator scapulae which is arising and this levator scapulae which is getting inserted it is running down and laterally reaches to the medial border of the scapula above the spine of the scapula 
and below the superior angle of the scapula. So this is where the levator scapula is getting inserted. Here you can identify this is how the levator scapula is running. Then the nerve supply is by it is innervated by the direct branches of C3 and C4 spinal nerves and C5 spinal nerve passing through the dorsal scapula around supplies to it. So the levator scapula elevate and steady the scapula during movements of the arm. Here you can identify this is where the levator scapula is getting inserted. Now let us see that. Yeah, it is elevating. See the moment how it is elevating the scapula, elevating the scapula. Now rhomboidus major, rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor. So this rhomboidus major it arises from the spines, uh, spines of T2 to T5, T2 to T5, and their supraspinous ligaments, and it is inserted. It is inserted to the medial border of the scapula below the root of spine of scapula below the root of spine of scapula where we can identify it is giving insertion to the rhomboidus major rhomboidus major so it is extending from the inferior angle to the root of the spine of the scapula so this is all the area is occupied with rhomboidus major and rhomboidus minor it is a thick cylindrical muscle which is arising from the lower part of ligamentum nuchae and spines of seventh cervical uh, vertebrae and the first thoracic vertebrae and it is inserted to the base of the triangular area at the root of the spine of the scapula so nerve supply of rhombitis is by uh, dorsal scapular nerve only and actions of the rhombitis is retract the scapula as in uh, squaring the shoulders let us see that so this is where the rhombitis minor is arising and this is the insertion where at the base of the root of the spine of the scapula so what is this base is this spine is a triangular shape spine has a triangular shape apex is projecting extending as the spine of the scapula base is present towards the medial border or vertebral border of scapula so this is where the rhomboidus minor is getting inserted here you try to see the movements of it these are the moments elevating then retract retraction of the scapula is by this rhomboidus muscles and also by the middle fibers of trapezius muscle so this is about the back muscles my dear friends it is very short class and you can easily understand and these muscles are very very important during the dissection of the back when you are approaching the kidneys, when you are approaching the kidneys from the back, at the lower aspect, first muscle which you are going to encounter is nothing but your latissimus dorsi. Thank you, my dear friends. See you soon with a new class.